Okay, guys, I guess we can start. Um, so I will start sharing my screen. I hope you can see it. Yes. Cool. So, uh, as usually, let's start from the uh, from the tracking our roadmap, and we'll go to the MSI roadmap, which is located in our product wiki. Oops. Yeah. So uh, during the current week, we were working on the next stories. We were working on a implementing right uh, runtime calculation of stock quantity, taking into account the reservation. And the reservation story was uh, implemented in a previous print. And uh, another activity we were working on was uh, covering with web API test uh, uh, already existing functionality for the sources and stocks. So I believe that uh, uh, our today's meeting, we will spend some time discussing the uh, test coverage and what actually functionality in the scope of MSI covered uh, with uh, automated tests. And we already have three different kind of tests on a project unit integration and the web API test. So we will talk uh, what kind of functionality we actually cover with uh, uh, what kind of testing and why do we do that. And after that, we, uh, we discuss our progress on the next story regarding the stock quantity calculation. And if there would be any open question, so we will discuss them, so don't hesitate to, uh, to ask the question or uh, maybe have some general question not related to, uh, to the current meeting agenda. So anything regarding the uh, multi-source inventory is welcome. So let's go to the, to the source code. So as you see, uh, as you see, uh, like maybe you remember, so just a uh, small introduction. During the previous sprint, we, uh, we actually fixed it, uh, we actually closed the story, which introduced new indexation mechanism for the inventory, where we created a virtual stock items, based on a linkage rule. So we have the physical sources and we have a virtual uh, stock uh, and we provide an ability of assignment uh, of the physical sources to this virtual stock. And after that, this virtual stock would be assigned to the Magenta scope, to the sales channel, for example, to the Magenta website. And uh, based on this rule of assignment, we actually create the uh, index and this index would be used to um, to look up for the precise quantity of particular SQ in a given uh, in a given scope. So we created uh, we actually implemented that story. That story was implemented by Lars and we accepted it. But uh, uh, working with uh, during this week, working with that code and making some kind of testing, we found out that uh, there are some scenarios which need to be covered additionally with integration tests. So, as you probably know, in Magento we have uh, several kind of testing, like unit testing, and we have a dedicated folder uh, unit test. Uh, where all the unit tests are located. We have an integration test and we have the uh, web API test. Also, we have additional static tests and the uh, functional test, but currently the story is not about uh, this kind of testing. So uh, when actually we created, when actually we created uh, indexation, 
So it, it would be pretty interesting to see if we will, uh, if we will find the, um, I believe this one, it, it would uh, not, sorry, yeah. Um, merge my line. It should be this one. So, uh, what what's the interesting part? I wanted to. Uh, I just can't find it quickly. So, what the, what was the interesting part that? Uh, we had the indexation process and because like indexation process uh, is the process which happens under the hood of Magenta. So we can just uh, cover it with the, with the web API test because the web API test, uh, the main goal of the web API test to cover the, or the public API. So uh, part of our service contracts and we don't provide the service contracts for the indexation. And uh, if you will cover the indexation process with a unit test, we actually would not find a lot of bugs because actually unit tests are not dedicated to, uh, to reveal some bugs in your code. So actually the best way to cover the indexation process is integrational testing, where we don't mock uh, all the objects which are used for some particular scenario, but all real objects are used. So it was pretty interesting bug. Uh, I can find it, Valera, maybe you, you can recap me. In the scope of each pull request, we, uh, we delivered the bug which fixes the MySQL fatal error. Please, um, go ahead. Yeah, so we, uh, we had a bug and uh, actually pretty, that was pretty interesting because we had the test. The test was covered. We had a uh, we had a code of business logic. The code of business logic was covered with test, but sometimes we we actually throw a fatal error, and uh, actually our tests were green, but actually the fatal error happened. And uh, this kind of problems could be seventy six. So. Uh, Valera just remind me that the, yeah, 76. So I wanted to show you this particular case. It's pretty interesting because we had a pretty straightforward uh, error. Like uh, our expression here accepts that uh, the source ID should be provided, but we actually pass a list of IDs. And because we, in our unit test, for example, we mock everything, we mock this situation as well, so we can find the, uh, the real problem. And the real problem could be revealed, for example, pretty easily when we launch uh, this particular use case and all the objects would be real but not mocked. And uh, in Magento, you can achieve this with uh, integration testing. So actually, this code should be rewritten as this one, and the the error would be fixed pretty easily. So uh, returning to the code, so what we did, we covered the whole reindexation process with the uh, uh, with the integration test, and actually the integration test uh, is very mm, good for this particular situation for covering uh, indexation. Because, uh, as I already said uh, before, uh, there are no explicit ways to access the indexation mechanism uh, calling the um, API services. So this is something which happens under the hood of Magenta. And the uh, unit test is not really um, productive and effective mechanism for covering, covering this functionality. So this is what uh, what we did uh, covering this particular situation, and uh, all the reindexation mechanism we already have up to this moment with the uh, integration testing, 
And now uh, I'm stop sharing the screen and uh, Valeri will run all the testing, all the integration testing. And after that, we can go on to the web API testing, which uh, provide the test coverage for the, uh, for the public API, which, uh, which is a part of our service layer. So, so I am stop sharing and giving a word to Valerie. Okay. <clears throat> I share my screen. I'm sharing on integration tests. So in the scope of this integration test, we actually work with all the real objects. We actually create, we actually work with the MySQL database. And this MySQL database is a part of the uh, Magento installation. So we really create an index table and we really check that uh, the table created so, uh, is the uh, expected table. And uh, the data field with this table is a real table based on the aggregation among all the, uh, all the sources we have. And the quantity which is stored in this index table represents the real quantity which uh, became uh, as a result of an aggregation among all the existing source quantity. So here at the beginning of the test, Valeri is showing you that uh, what precise case is covered with the test. So here we have the uh, some particular SQ which exists in a uh, European source. So the source, as you already know, is the physical physical warehouse. So we have two physical warehouses in Europe. No, not even two, but four physical warehouses having names like EU source one, EU source two, EU source three, and EU source four. And we have uh, covering all possible situations. So in the first two warehouses, we have the quantity like five, uh, five and a half. Like if it's, uh, it's uh, the value is decimal. On a second uh, source, we have the integer quantity, like three pieces of this particular item. In a third uh, source, we have 10 items of this, uh, this particular item, but uh, actually the, uh, the status is out of stock. So you can't actually just include this to the, to the aggregation. And uh, the, fourth, uh, the fourth warehouse uh, has also 10 items of this particular product, but uh, the, the source is disabled. So for example, some problem ha uh, happened on this physical source and the admin decided just to switch it off temporarily. So the source is disabled. So after the reindexation and we have the, uh, we have the stock and uh, uh, what, the, what the rules for the, uh, for the stock assignment? Yeah, so the, so the, we have the U stock, which is supposed to cover just, uh, um, just sources from the U. So like here you can see that uh, source one, source two, and source three assigned to the U stock. And we have the, uh, ah. We have global stock, like, even have more US stock relation one to one. We cover it relation one to many, relation one to one, and one and many to one. Yeah. So in the situation of the global stock, we supposed to get a quantity like three plus five and a half, and end up with eight and a half. And we should cover the situation that we now need to take into account out of stock. Uh, out of stock product and disabled source. So this is, uh, this is uh, made in the scope of this test. So you can, could you please scroll a little bit lower? 
because integration tests working with the real environment, we need to pre-configure our environment. That's why we provide the data features, and each of the data features supposed to pre-configure and pre-create some particular entity. For example, current, uh, current uh, feature uh, create sources. So uh, as you already heard, we have the four uh, physical sources which need to be pre-created to test out uh, our business logic. And actually, this, uh, this feature create these uh, physical sources. Uh, yes, you can return to the integration test. That's why we have a modularity uh, here in the scope of the uh, integration test. So each of the fixture uh, creates some particular entities and uh, we make that uh, separated uh, into different files to make it reusable. So for example, as you can see, the test reindex row uses uh, the source fixture and the same uh, fixture is reused in the text reindex list. So potentially this uh, fixture could be reused in other integration tests as well. Um, also, uh, other interesting part is the rollback mechanism for um, for uh, fixtures. It's really interesting. Uh, because we have uh, some rollbacks, uh, because sometimes we are reset up um, the test case uh, new, or it's sometimes it's required to roll back some data. Yeah, it's it's really important to mention, as Lars said, that because we are uh, actually affecting the real database of Magenta, after the test run, we need to clean up the environment after our changes and that's why we actually use the rollback fixtures so as uh, Valera now open uh, a listing of the rollback fixture the current fixture actually make a clean up of all the of all the stocks which were pre-created for this particular test to run so what we what we are doing here using the source uh, stock repository we are uh, looping through the uh, already pre-created stocks and uh, just removing them. Mm. Well, notice, uh, for example, for sources, we don't have API for removing sources and we need to do direct uh, query SQL for removing sources. Yeah. So it's pretty interesting and the uh, integration test is really uh, is really appropriate mechanism to cover the reindexation logic. Now we will show you the web API test because, as you probably know, most of the modules uh, used in Magento provide the service interfaces, and we have a dedicated uh, module to improve the modularity inventory API. And in the scope of that API, we declare the API interfaces. And uh, here in the left side of the screen, you see all the possible web API tests. And web API tests are uh, supposed to cover these, uh, these public APIs. And uh, this is very important because more and more application start using Magenta as a headless Magenta. And in the case of using headless Magenta, uh, Magenta would be called uh, using the web API. And the web API would be used as a transport. And uh, after that, uh, the call will come up to some particular interface from the service contract. So each of these uh, public interfaces supposed to be covered with the, uh, with the uh, web API test. So our current test, which uh, run by Valeri, actually making uh, REST API and the SOAP request to the Magento. Pre-installed Magento for testing purposes, and we make this uh, um, REST and SOAP calls to check that uh, 
uh, all the public APIs work as expected and that uh, our APIs are covered with uh, uh, this functional testing. So during this week, we, uh, so you can share with uh, update, Valerie. Uh, authorization. Uh, about uh, what kind of uh, web API test were added uh, during yeah. this week? Uh, during this week, we worked on uh, stock source links, uh, and we uh, have started work about uh, on uh, source items. Uh, we can see we have source repository, stock repository, stock source link, but uh, source uh, item is uh, missed and uh, it will be final, final patch without uh, code coverage. And after uh, merge these PRs, we will have 100% uh, uh, of code coverage. Full, 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 uh, full, full coverage. Also, I want to notice uh, about uh, place, <coughs> uh, about location of our test. Integration test we put in uh, into implementation model, uh, but API test we put in our API uh, model. Maybe you provide the play description. Yeah. Why we why we to do? Yeah. That? So the idea is that because the web API test covering the uh, service contract, so they are covering the API. We put all the web API test into the uh, inventory API. Could you please just scroll a little bit higher? <coughs> so we have two modules. The first one provides the implementation, inventory module, and another module, which is here, provides the uh, API. So the service contract for the inventory module. So we are doing that to improve uh, the modularity. That's why test which supposed to cover the public interface are stored in the inventory API as well. So you can see a test folder in the inventory API and uh, in this folder we placed all the web API tests. So here you see that all the tests which were run by Valeri finished. So we had, uh, currently we have 46 tests covering the uh, existing APIs with 264 assertions. And uh, in the scope of uh, current week, we co cover it all the stories and all the business logic which uh, which was brought uh, by previous print uh, so it's pre pretty pre pretty interesting that uh, the uh, the test coverage is pre pretty good for all the business cases we have uh, in our in our project Okay, so that was the uh, update regarding the testing. I'm stop sharing. Yeah, you can stop sharing. Uh, uh, Alessandro, do you have the update regarding your, uh, mm, your story devoted for the services which provide the stock calculation in a runtime based on the, reser uh, based on the reservation? I just started uh, thinking about it. Uh, I asked Valeria some help to, to get started because um, I had some issues with my uh, with this with the stock index. Uh, I have a couple of questions just to to be sure that I, I took the right path. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you want uh, me to ask right now or we can we can talk about that later. Well, I believe the. Okay. We can discuss it now, so it's not a problem. Okay, so we have this uh, aggregation, that's uh, our stock index, uh, which represents um, the number of uh, um, uh, items that can that are available, considering all the sources and the links between sources and stock. Uh, but actually that's not the real saleable quantity because uh, we also have to take into consideration the reservations. So uh, 
you confirm me that the index will only we won't contain the reservation data, but the reservation data will be calculated at runtime through specific services. So what I have to do in in for example in I'm I'm um, at the moment I'm on the get product quantity in stock service. Uh, this service uh, gives back the available uh, quantity that can be sold, taking into account the data that we have in the index table. And then it will take into account all the reservations that are appended on a specific stock ID. Mm -hmm. Correct. So in, in this service, I have to, uh, to use the index table. I have to read the given a, uh, an SKU that identifies a product and given a stock ID, I have to read um, from the corresponding stock uh, index uh, the quantity of for for the uh, that product, which already is the sum of all the quantities available considering all the linked sources, and subtract or uh, add. Uh, the appended reservation for that SKU in that stock ID. This is basically the logic that I have to implement. I just confirmation of of the fact that I'm I'm uh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, uh, basically, that that's it. And I also will try to cover this service with tests, but uh, I will. I will. I won't uh, do it test driven for now because I I I need to to be more in comfort zone and I will try to to implement it and then in case uh, cover it with test and in case of need I will I will ask for some help to you. Okay. So, uh, mm -hmm. Yes, I will work to uh, I will work on these services uh, next week. Mm -hmm. I hope and I hope to have some updates uh, for next meeting. Okay. Okay. And do you have any open question now? Like we, we need to. Follow? No. Uh, just uh, just uh, one thing that um, I had some issues because I didn't get um, I didn't get it uh, well, and that can be useful for people joining and maybe uh, that are mm -hmm. here listening. Um, the the index table which contains the data which is aggregated upon indexation is, is, uh, is created on the fly upon first indexation. Mm -hmm. uh, and what's more, uh, if there aren't any, uh, any data, if there isn't any data to write, the table is not even created. For, so, uh, for example, um, the first time that I run the index, I didn't have any source, uh, um, any product associated to, to source, so uh, it didn't create the table, and I thought it was something uh, wrong. But uh, it was my uh, it was my interpretation was wrong of, of how it worked, uh, and I expected to find, uh, for example, the setup script which created the table, and then uh, Valera uh, explained me how that index table is created on the fly. So this is only um, this can be useful. Uh, to know for people not, not knowing how exactly it works and then don't want to, to dig yeah. into the code. So it's, uh, the question you raise is pretty interesting and it's pretty interesting from architectural point of view because we, uh, so what you just described that, uh, for example, creating, uh, we actually differentiate two processes in Magento, like creation and index table structure and filling this uh, index with the data and we do it uh, here on a MSI project because uh, in the scope of the MSI we are working with a pretty pretty sophisticated kind of indexes so it's not uh, pretty common to Magento because we decided to split indexes by some dimension and in our case dimension is the stock ID so we will create uh, this uh, new index table dynamically. So, because uh, particularly we can create some uh, additional stock in an admin panel and for that stock we will dynamically create index table. For most of other indexes we already have like a catalog rule, uh, it's a, like product index, etc. We already have the index structures pre-created. 
But what we want to achieve with this dynamic structure, that uh, we want to improve the scalability of the index. So that there would be an ability to scale our data among several tables, so not to increase the load of the data and the load of the re request to this particular table and have a bottleneck. Yeah, and that's why, because we have a dynamic structure, we have two different processes, like creation the table and the filling the table with the data. And because we want to follow the CQRS and the single responsibility, we uh, actually separate these processes. And uh, after some changes in your code, for example, after you created some assignment between the source and the stocks, uh, it's actually a pretty interesting task and uh, Lars uh, was working on the task uh, at the beginning of this week because we need to invalidate several several index dimensions like mm -hmm. all the stocks should be invalidated to which this particular source is assigned to and uh, that's why uh, actually we need to and because we don't want to introduce the performance degradation in the admin panel because in admin panel if some uh, assignment happened uh, admin just need to get this like this assignment happen and uh, and that's okay. So we need to make a uh, lot of calculation, make the, his, uh, his screen freeze for several minutes, like while we be on processing uh, this request, while we making uh, several, several index table recalculated and recreated. So we, we don't need to do it. We need to segregate our uh, responsibilities. That's why all we do is just invalidate the index. And another process will actually uh, make all the uh, invalidation. That's why we have, like Valera probably told you, that uh, we have a dedicated process which will create the tables and another process which, we, which will peel data uh, for these indexes. So it could be, yeah, it could be uh, maybe not so... Uh, so it's pretty pretty logical from technical side, and we had a conversation with uh, Mark, who is not on the call, and he proved that that approach. So it's pretty interesting from the architectural and technical point of view. I I, I see um, a second problem on on this because um, it could be happen uh, that I use uh, a temporary table if a full index is um, required for it and uh, you must also uh, think about it uh, to use um, the temporary table sometimes uh, for some products because uh, we build a temporary uh, temp table um, for some um, for, for big merchants, you have many products with many uh, source linkage and many quantities. It can be possible that uh, in the old table, it's the data not correct and um, the new data is already written in the, in the, um, uh, in the new indexing table. It can be a, a problem for you or it can be an architecture problem in uh, the future, I think. Yes. Yeah, so what? Uh, so what? Lars mentioned that we need to uh, make uh, all, like all the reindexation process should happen in a temporary table to make it sure that uh, we have the correct data. And at the end of the index process, just to make a switch of the temp from the temporary table to the real one, to make sure that we did not build the incorrect index and not substitute the correct but outdated index with incorrect or inconsistent data. Am I correct, Lars? Yes. So, yeah. So the uh, solutions for the, actually, that's what we do. Uh, actually, that's what we do. Uh, because we, we are supporting the zero downtime. That's why we create a uh, new index in a new table, and uh, after the in, uh, after the reindexation is finished, we just drop the old index and rename the newly created index into the uh, into the name of the previous one. So 
we always have the name which should be reachable from the code of the business logic. For example, we have the uh, stock item uh, underscore one, and the one is the ID of the stock. So the stock item underscore one is the name of the index we have in our database. And if we have an invalidation, we create a table, table, temporary table, which is called like stock item underscore one underscore TMP. And after we finish the reindexation, we actually uh, drop uh, stock item underscore one and make a renaming of the stock item underscore one underscore TMP into stock item underscore one. So everything happened in a quick operation. That's why business logic supposed to know just about stock item underscore one and that's all. So no need to know about any kind of aliasing temporary table. So it's always reachable. Okay. Just a question uh, that uh, comes to my mind listening to this uh, switching mechanism. Is it possible uh, that while indexing a new temporary table based on data, this data changes, and at the end of indexation process, the new table is already in contains already invalid data, or is, uh, oh, or is it's actually a very good question, and uh, we need to. Um, this is possible. But we need to uh, try to escape from such situation because that um, this situation could uh, happen if we have cross-dependent data, if we have like circular dependencies between like one dimension is uh, relied on uh, on another dimension. So when we have a calculation of quantity, and uh, that quantity uh, depends on another index for example, something like that. So we need to try to escape the situation and uh, if we will get that, it will say about the architectural problems. So something like that we already have with, uh, uh, with the full text search index because our full text search index uh, actually dependent on several other indexes. For example, uh, full text search index supposed to be stored in uh, Elasticsearch and because, for, for example, for the layered navigation, we need price, we have a dependency on a price index. So we already need a price data pre-calculated before this uh, full text index would be, would be run. Also, we have dependency on a, uh, on a stock status, so on, on the inventory index, because uh, out, of, uh, out of stock products, should be uh, removed from the search result list. So the full text search index has a dependency on several other indexes. And this actually introduced some prob problems uh, there. So what we, are, uh, what we are trying to do in our, uh, in our uh, approach for the MSI indexation, all the uh, dimensions are not cross-related to each other. So we don't, uh, don't have this uh, dependencies among the uh, dimensions. Good. Uh, just another question, if I can. Yeah, of course. Um, I have to. I have to resolve the index table name, and uh, Valera showed me that I have to use um, a resolver. Uh, that given the index name gives gives me back the the table the corresponding table name yes um, but since we have uh, dimensions um, I'm I wonder uh, once I have the table name of the stock item index to me that's a some sort of prefix I have to I have to append the suffix of the dimension that's the stock ID I'm I'm searching for so uh, um, this, mm -hmm. I don't think that this is done by the index resolver because I don't I don't see that the index resolver takes uh, also the stock ID as parameter. So it's something that has to be done uh, after this. And I'm wondering if we maybe should have to implement a specific resolver 
for the stock item index tables that may be given, given uh, the stock ID uh, gives us back the right, the correct table name. Or uh, maybe I'm not getting something. Uh, you are more than right. So I will share my screen to show you. So I believe, actually we will have two kind of resolvers. Uh, let me open our wiki. And I believe it should be in a technical vision. No, it's not in a technical vision, but it is in the mm, sales channel map. Yeah, it should be. No. Yeah, it should be here. So uh, what we already implemented. So here on this diagram, we have the main entities for the uh, for the new inventory, and we already implemented source source item. Uh, uh, stock, stock item, and the linkage of the sources which provide an ability to assign sources to, to, to stocks. But what we did not implement, we did not implement an ability to assign uh, stocks to sales channel. So we will have some, uh, uh, some resolver which would be introduced uh, at the level of the service contract, at the level of the API, which will provide an ability to resolve the current, um, current, uh, current stock by, by the sales channel. For example, providing the website ID, we will need to get the stock assigned to this, uh, to this sales channel. So, because uh, we, we are going to provide an ability to assign uh, stocks to, to websites. So we will have this particular a resolver which will resolve the stock by sales channel. And also, we'll have another, uh, another resolver uh, at the another level of uh, abstraction. So it would be more, uh, more uh, technical base. It would not be part of the API. It would be implemented pretty deep in the code where actually we need to retrieve the table we want to access. So, and that uh, resolver, we will retrieve the uh, table name by, by stock. So actually I can, uh, we already have that in code. So I can stop sharing and uh, Valera will show you how it's already implemented in his development branch. So he will show you this low level resolver. As you see, this resolver stored in, uh, in under the indexer names, namespace. Actually, I believe we need to put it into another namespace because uh, I believe Alessandro need to use this resolver as well. So probably it would be wrong for him to access the indexer mechanism because this resolver has nothing uh, so indexation is one uh, is just one of the possibility where this resolver could be used. So probably we need to move it under another namespace. But the implementation of this resolver, yeah, is like is like this. Well, um, but uh, is index name supposed to be something like inventory stock item, or sh uh, shall I pass also? For example, inventory stock item underscore stock ID. In this case, stock ID is placed in our domain. Yes. So. Ah, okay. So. Yeah. So. Is it please? Yeah, it, it would be. It would be. So the final name would be combined from the from the dimension plus uh, plus index ID. So you are not supposed to provide the underscore uh, mm -hmm. s uh, stock ID in the, uh, for the index name. Example, uh, we don't want to uh, hard code uh, stock ID name because we want to create more general solution. Yeah. Example of creating index name, we set index name, we add dimension, and in, our, and in this case, it is stock ID. In another case, it can be something from other. Uh, we can set alias, create index, and resolve name. Uh, but if I have a question, I don't know. 
do we uh, then move uh, this uh, object in another namespace? Uh, because uh, this implementation depends on index scope resolver of framework, and we need to put index name. Okay. Um, okay. okay. So, uh, sorry. Yeah. But we are can uh, speaking or discuss about uh, a better solution for Alexandro. It's if it's required for him or it will be helpful for him to resolve the correct name. Uh, let me let me think a little bit. Dun, 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 dun. I, I don't understand currently the, the main problem what uh, he has but um, if um, but he don't have some stock item uh, ID then he cannot resolve the correct name and I, I uh, um, must take a look at the concept and, and uh, I'm can understand more his problem uh, maybe I can show you my screen um, and show you the point probably uh, let me Okay. Do you see me? Do you see my screen? Uh, yes. Okay, after this is the concrete implementation that actually has uh, still to be done of the execute method of the get product quantity in stock service. Uh, I have the, as, as parameter of the, this method, I have the SKU and the stock ID. And mm -hmm. now what I have to do uh, uh, is probably to retrieve, uh, first of all, how many uh, I have to retrieve the quantity of this uh, product uh, or the product identified by the SKU in the given stock. Um, so here, uh, what what I need is to um, retrieve the correct name to resolve the index name uh, for the correct dimension that corresponds to the stock ID, as far as I've understood. Mm -hmm. So this is my this is this is where I'm I I need to understand how yes. to get the correct name for the table, provided I have the stock ID. I I know that the the index name, the the index name is inventory stock item. So I uh, index name is inventory yes. stock item, and uh, but if I ask to the resolver to give me the, the, the corresponding table name of inventory stock item index. Uh, shouldn't I provide also a stock ID in order for the resolver to give me the right table? Or maybe this is too low level and I have to work on a higher level with other kind of resolver. This is basically my, um, my question. So, yeah, I got your question. So we can we can switch. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. And I have also another question. <laughs> Sorry, uh, today I'm, I'm full of questions. Oh, yeah, it's okay, it's okay. It's, uh, it's uh, from uh, the usage point of view of this API. Um, because the stock, uh, this, is, this is really a question, I don't know. Um, the stock uh, is something uh, that's real. It's a bit low level. What we will have in, in the future will be the the sales channel that will be linked to the stock. So I wonder if a, a, a proper API should should be get product quantity in channel rather than in stock. Yeah. So uh, you 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 correct, uh, and uh, so I, I believe the correct uh, name of the interface of just get product quantity. So probably we no need to expose that in stock prefix or suffix uh, yeah. here because uh, we, it's, uh, it's kind of a leaky abstraction that we show that uh, we get the product quantity from stock because 
you are more, uh, you are absolutely correct that uh, we will use this e API during the checkout process, and you, uh, at the time of checkout process, uh, we will work in some part, uh, in the scope of some particular yeah. sales channel. So we are interested how many uh, of particular SQ could be uh, could be sold uh, in the scope of this particular sales channel, but not in yeah. in the scope of particular stock. So yes, because the, there, is, there is this one-to-one -one link yeah. between yeah. sales and sorry, uh, yes, it's not one-to-one. -one. I uh, a sales channel can be connected to one stock. But the same stock can be connected to multiple channels. Yeah, correct. So, given a channel, I can derive the, the right stock, mm -hmm. and then I can, I can from the stock, I can, I can uh, get the right uh, index table and so on. Uh, okay, this was only uh, just a confirmation that. Uh, mm -hmm. But there is no problem at the moment. Uh, for me, since we don't have the the, the sales channel. Uh, part implemented for me it's okay to, to go on with this stock abstraction then we will we will probably uh, change that in the future but actually i believe we can fix it from the naming point of view at least so we okay. can remove this uh, in stock okay suffix yeah um so i don't know if lars if i answered your question uh if if i gave you some more hint of what i'm i need here resolve and uh, yeah. actually we already probably have an answer on on your question regarding how that could be resolved and uh, this kind of resolving mechanism uh, has been already introduced mm -hmm. so uh, we can send it to the to the chat so okay uh, maybe I share my screen or, or sorry I stopped sharing mine okay, okay. So you as a, so your uh, function receives the stock ID okay. and the uh, okay yeah so I have to use the, the index name builder okay yeah, you can use the index name builder okay. but your uh, your question is pretty pretty valid whether this is is this level abstraction is good enough to use in the in the API implementation or is it really low level? As mm -hmm. for me, uh, it's probably good enough. So we are not uh, not uh, accessing the uh, some particular uh, table level. So we 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 are relying on uh, uh, on interface provided a little bit lower level. So. From the architectural point of view, I believe it's it's pretty good to resolve. Okay. Mm -hmm. Igor, what do you think about some uh, wrapping um, or some some uh, name wrap for uh, for the index? Uh, my my idea is uh, to have some uh, wrapper uh, for the name builder uh, they have um, one um, one uh, parameter stock ID and uh, the second parameter can be the alias and this return uh, the name it's only uh, more than a wrapper but it's easier to change because now we have different um, different um, yeah classes that use um, indexer and hopefully uh, it will be not changed in the future but if it will be changed we uh, must reflect the array name builder and it can be um, it's not so much logic in this uh, this wrapper class but it can be helpful for the future uh, the biggest uh, the biggest concern I have that uh, actually, you know, we are contributing to the Magenta core. So all the indexation logic should be aligned with the naming convention we have in our core. And for now, currently, we can change the naming for the indexes because in our case, 
index, uh, ta indi table index name represents the APIs. So uh, ex uh, third party developers could use them for joining mechanism, for example. That's why we can just change the name of the index table. And uh, in our case, and actually in Magento, Magento 2.2 release, uh, it was uh, agreed that we have this, so Valera can, uh, can open alias alias main. So the naming convention introduced was used to name replica and the main. And uh, what we actually have, we have the replica prefix for, 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 uh, for index table. That's uh, why we need uh, to keep this naming conversion in our indexes as well. So for example, like if we have a particular index which is called stock item underscore one, where one represents the stock ID, uh, so this is, uh, this is the index table for the stock one. During the indexation mechanism, we will create a table, temporary table, which name would be stock item underscore one underscore replica. And actually this naming convention is dictated by the Magento 2 uh, code practices and agreement. So we are not allowed to change the naming conversion for some particular index. We should be consistent to, uh, with uh, existing approaches and with existing naming conversion we have for other indexes in Magento. That's the reason uh, to stay yeah, but, this name. But, but you uh, don't understand my point or my uh, my what I mean. I mean a wrap class uh, with only one parameter uh, that returned the correct name for API for the index itself. It's it's only a wrapper in in this class is uh, only uh, a re uh, this return function and uh, the alias wrapped and then uh, Alexandro can be used uh, easier. But uh, actually, uh, <laughs> so you propose to provide the sugar API. So the uh, idea of that API is to simplify uh, index name resolving. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's only my, my point. Uh, in this class, is, um, in, uh, uh, we have um, uh, a resolver, a resolve um, stock indexer or resolve stock indexer name. And uh, this stock indexer name resolver has one parameter in the execute function, uh, stock ID, and we turn the correct name for uh, for this. It's not many logic. It's only a wrapper. It's uh, easier. Uh, and then uh, Alexander doesn't need uh, to uh, have a, a own um, index name builder and must uh, the stock ID uh, build uh, with st a string concat. It's it's only a wrapper for this logic. Um, uh, it's one point for every for for uh, the, yeah, this. I, I got your point. Uh, Valera, could you please share your screen again? So we will look at the existing existing logic we have. So in our current index builder, we build. Yeah, but yeah, I, I think Lars, what's a, what yeah. Lars is suggesting is to create a, a, a service class that uh, takes as parameter the index name and the, the the stock ID and basically does what I see between rows eighty two and eighty six uh, can be that basically is a builder wrapper. Cool. Uh, in any case, we can we can postpone this 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 decision. Uh, we can think about it more careful. Uh, at the moment, I can use this uh, this example to, mm -hmm. to build my my to have my index name uh, properly built. 
then we can consider if uh, this builder is uh, is too low level or uh, yeah. and we can create something more high level yeah um, but it shouldn't it, it, I, I don't think that it it should be an API it can be a service class just like yeah. I uh, definitely agree Google. definitely agree so okay. I, I totally agree with uh, with this yeah. statement so okay. Uh, do we have anything other to discuss uh, during this meeting? Um, I'm fine. For me, also fine. I starting with my my task. Um, hopefully, I finish on Tuesday, and um, I also thinking about to written more tests. If, if if it's required, I will ask you and um, which test cases can be helpful to cover it or um, it's, but uh, um, first I must start with the implementation and then um, I can thinking about which problems can we have or how we can okay this, this in an extra call or in the chat uh, by the way guys I have a small update for you so uh, uh, Valery and uh, you, uh, Eugene Shaksuwaro. So Alessandra already know Eugene. Uh, so going to Poland uh, during this weekend on a uh, Meet Magenta PL. And before the Meet Magenta PL, it's gonna be a Magenta Contribution Day. So there would be some track devoted for the multi-source inventory. So if you will work on any contribution for MSI during the, uh, during the Sunday, you can, you can ping me or Valery. So Valery would be at that event. I would be in Kyiv, but uh, I would be online. So uh, you can participate and we would be reachable during the cool Sunday. Uh, we can provide your assi assistance to you. So. Thank you. Nice to hear. Nice to hear. Oh, yeah. So, uh, Valery just remind me. I will share my screen once more time. So, as you remember, we had a pretty problematic issue. So, let's open our dashboard. So, in our project, we had a we had a problem we stuck with uh when the uh, when alessandra uh, was working on a previous story devoted for the reservation mechanism and we found out that current implementation of the validation exception uh introduce some errors and actually it violates the design principle we have in magenta so it uh, violated four main principles we have uh, because there was a business logic in the constructor and our constructor should be free of business logic there should be just assignments inside we have a reference to uh, to a variable which is not assigned in the uh, in the constructor so that was that reference was happened in the at, uh, underneath of the at error function so we access the phrase variable which is assigned just here so and we we end up with the unpredicted situation and errors and actually we fix it and uh, we fix it and actually already merged uh -huh. so but no, uh, so no 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 it was a reference you you did not you did not link to this issue let me show you so we did not have a pull request link to the issue so now this uh exception looks like this one so we have just assignment and constructor 
and uh, we still have gathers method. So what we did to accomplish this, we introduced the aggregate exception interface. And uh, because a problem was that we had to inherit from the aggregate, uh, abstract aggregate exception. So we uh, solved our problems, eliminating that uh, inheritance. And uh, to, to make it in a backward compatible way, we introduced the aggregate exception interface. We had to do it to uh, not break our web APIs. So actually the main uh, problems for us was the web API framework, which gets the errors and wraps them into the response which should be returned to the client. Uh, so we did it introducing this interface. So if you're interested, you can see the details of the 92 pull request in the scope of which this, uh, in the scope of which actually the issue has been fixed. Yeah. And good. Are you going to merge this uh, PR? Uh... Yeah, it's going to be merged, I believe, just after this meeting. So, okay. Okay. So, yeah. So, so I, I can add my, complete my reservation builder test yeah. based on, on. Okay. Yeah. So we unblock your ticket for, for the negative yeah. scenarios. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Okay, guys. So, looks like if uh, nobody has other questions, we can probably finish this meeting. As for me, it was pretty productive. We discussed quite a lot of things. And uh, I will upload recording to the YouTube channel and provide you a link as soon as, uh, as I can. And uh, thanks for your attendance. Uh, hope to see you soon. And if you have any other questions, you are free to ping me or Valera or anybody else in chat. And by the way, maybe... Uh, Actually, for the upcoming contribution day, 40 people registered. So maybe, I, I can't predict now, but maybe there would be some more guys who will have uh, questions. So uh, they will write, to the, we will add them to the MSI channel. So if you, and, and they will ask some questions. So if you have the answer, just please support them yeah, as you can. Okay. Yeah. Okay, guys. Thank you. Thank you weekend okay and have a great weekend thank you bye thank you bye, bye.